Hello, my name is Larry Kelly and I'm a meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Miami, South Florida. This webinar is going to talk about hurricane hazards. When you think hurricane hazards, you want to think of this word, SWIFT. S stands for storm surge, W stands for wind, I and F stand for inland flooding, T stands for tornadoes, and then we also have waves and rip currents. Let's dive a little deeper into these hazards. Wind. Now that's what most people think about. When people think about hurricanes, they think about the category 1 through 5 of the Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale. Below you can see the wind speeds associated with each category. Now we all know wind causes a lot of damage, and that's what most people think about. When you hear hurricane, people look at these photos and that's what they think. They think wind is the primary hazard. Well, water. That's what most people don't think about, but that's what you really should be. Water is what kills. 9 out of 10 people die from water, not wind. Now, in the chart below of tropical cyclone fatalities, you can see storm surge accounts for about 49% of fatalities, while rain, that inland flooding threat, accounts for about 27%. You can see wind up there in the upper left is only about 8%. So what is storm surge? Storm surge is the rise of water generated by a storm. Now, there are a lot of factors that determine the amount of surge for a particular storm. The intensity of the storm, the forward speed of the storm, is it moving slow or is it moving fast? The size of the hurricane, the angle of approach to the coastline, and the width and slope of the ocean bottom. Flooding rains. Now if you remember, flooding rains is the second leading cause of fatalities from landing falling tropical cyclones. And widespread torrential rainfall from these land falling storms often cause calls flooding hundreds of miles inland. Here's an example, Hurricane Francis in 2004. Hurricane Francis made landfall in central Florida. Now if you go up to north Florida, 100 miles inland or so, you can see that there's a widespread range of 10 to 15 inches of rain that fell well inland away from landfall. But if you move even further up the coast in the western Carolinas, you can see about 20 plus inches of rain fell there. On the right, you can see the Texas Task Force 1 water rescue squad boats moving into a flooded community to rescue and evacuate residents impacting by the flooded rains of Hurricane Harvey. Hurricanes and tropical storms can also produce tornadoes and water spouts. These tornadoes and water spouts most often occur in thunderstorms embedded in rain bands, and some of these rain bands will be far away from the center. Waves and rip currents. Now down here in South Florida, we may deal with rip currents on a daily occasion or, you know, oftentimes throughout the year. But hurricanes and tropical cyclones can also, you know, help enhance those factors down here as well. And storms far away, say a storm off the Carolinas, may cause high surf and rip currents all the way down here to South Florida. So while it may not be a direct impact of a tropical cyclone to South Florida, we still may see some marine and beach impacts from a storm that is far away. For more information about hurricane hazards, you can always visit the National Hurricane Center, your local weather forecast office at weather.gov backslash Miami. And then you always want to be prepared. Every year it only takes one hurricane to impact your area. Thank you for joining us today.